Toma News presents Castaway. Help! Sign on the beach saves three castaways. What would I do if this were a movie isn't usually the best course of action. Blasting in your eyes in the middle of the night will probably get you arrested, not into her panties. Don't get the reference? Watch the classics, you Philistines! Anyway, good news! Writing the word help in huge letters in the sand is now officially a movie cliche that works. Three friends set off from the island of Pulap in the Federated States of Micronesia on April 4th, but a few hours later were hurled into the sea after strong waves capsized their boat. They swam through the dark ocean before finally making it to the uninhabited Fandandik Island, about four miles from Pulap. As hours turned to days, the men were reported missing and the U.S. Coast Guard responded to requests for assistance. Now, the Pacific Ocean is kind of big, and even if you do make it to some tiny speck of land, as Tom Hanks and Wilson proved, finding you can still be very tricky. Luckily, however, going into movie mode worked for these three unidentified castaways who used palm leaves to spell out HELP on the beach. The men waved their life jackets as they stood near the word, and success! A U.S. Navy P-8A Poseidon aircraft spotted the sign, and the men were rescued less than four days into their ordeal. So do write HELP in great big huge letters on the beach, but we recommend waiting as long as possible before eating any of your fellow castaways. Any professional survivalists out there? Tell us what other movie tips are good ideas and uh, which ones are straight up dumb. Who knows? You might save a life or two. Missing surfer found alive after more than 30 hours in freezing water. An extremely lucky surfer has been rescued after disappearing for more than a day in the frigid waters of the Irish Sea. 22-year-old Matthew Bryce was last seen on his way to Westport Beach near Campbellton for a day of surfing at 9 a.m. Sunday morning. An alarm was raised at lunchtime on Monday after Bryce failed to contact his family and friends. Local police dispatched a rescue team to search for him. After spending hours searching for Bryce, the rescue team feared the worst. But at 7.30 p.m., a Coast Guard helicopter found Bryce. He was clinging to his surfboard about 13 miles off the coast. A member of the rescue team told BBC Radio that Bryce did the right thing by staying with his surfboard. He was able to stay alive for so long at sea because of his wetsuit. Bryce was hypothermic but conscious when the Coast Guard found him. He was flown to a hospital in Belfast. Scuba diver survives 18-hour ordeal in shark-infested waters. A 68-year-old man is lucky to be alive after spending 18 hours lost at sea this week. John Lucky Les Briarly was swimming off the coast in Queensland, Australia at a dive spot called Yongala Wreck when he got pulled away by a powerful current. A friend alerted authorities when he didn't return. But little did his buddy know that Briarly was being pulled some 50 kilometers away into shark-infested waters. The deep blue had taken him to Cape Upstart. That area is reportedly home to sharks. Oh! A search and rescue was launched for him, and he was eventually pulled from the water at around 11 a.m. on Monday. Thankfully, Briarly survived the ordeal and was treated for a mild case of hypothermia. Castaway survivor sued by family of man they say he cannibalized. The miraculous story of the longest surviving man to be cast away at sea has taken a dark twist, as Jose Salvador Alvarenga is being sued by the family of his companion, Ezequiel Cordoba. They have accused Alvarenga of surviving by eating their relative while the pair were cast away together. In November 2012, the two men set out on a two-day fishing trip that turned into a nightmare. Cordoba was a less experienced fisherman and refused to eat certain foods that sustained Alvarenga during the arduous drifting. The men survived on raw meat from fish, birds, and turtles, as well as drinking their own urine and rainwater. Cordoba fell ill after unknowingly eating a bird that had eaten a venomous yellow sea snake. Alvarenga also claimed that Cordoba was having a really hard time, suffering from hallucinations and trying to jump off the boat. Alvarenga said he promised Cordoba that he wouldn't eat him, and he would tell his mother about what happened. Finally, after four months at sea, Cordoba died. His body was never found. Alvarenga said he kept his companion's dead body on board to talk to for six days before realizing his own madness and throwing Cordoba's remains overboard. He washed up on the Marshall Islands 438 days after leaving Mexico. A couple living alone on a remote island found him and took care of him for five days. 
Alvarenga was reunited with his family in El Salvador after undergoing medical treatment. After much scrutiny, he passed a lie detector test that examined his version of events, but Cordoba's family is now suing him over allegations that Alvarenga aid Cordoba to survive. They are asking for a million dollars in addition to half of the money from the sale of Alvarenga's book about his amazing survival. According to an unwritten, unspoken traditional maritime law, cannibalism is acceptable when sailors are stranded at sea. So what do you think? Is Alvarenga really a cannibal? And if he is, is it okay to eat people if you are stranded with no other source of food? A man believed to be missing was rescued from a capsized sailboat after 66 days at sea. Weeks after the Coast Guard called off the search for Lewis Jordan, a container ship found the missing South Carolina man on Thursday. Lewis Jordan left Bucksport Plantation Marina in South Carolina on January 23rd for a solo fishing trip. Once out at sea, Jordan's boat experienced problems and capsized. Jordan survived for the next 66 days by eating raw fish and drinking rainwater in order to quench his thirst. A passing German container ship spotted Jordan 200 miles east of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. The container found Jordan sitting on top of the hull of his capsized sailboat and brought Jordan aboard on Thursday afternoon. Jordan, who had a minor shoulder injury, was flown by helicopter to a hospital in Norfolk, Virginia after his rescue. Colombian castaway rescued thousands of miles from Hawaii. A sailor from Colombia has been rescued after a two-month ordeal in the Pacific Ocean where he survived by eating gulls and fish. Four sailors left Colombia more than two months ago on a skiff. At some point, their skiff's engine failed and the men were left adrift. They survived for a time by eating seagulls and fish. However, three of the sailors died while at sea. The one man left kept all three of his companions' passports. The 29-year-old survivor was spotted more than 2,000 miles southeast of Hawaii on April 26 by a Panama-flagged bulk carrier, which then promptly rescued the sailor. The unnamed survivor landed in Honolulu on Wednesday morning in good condition and has been handed over to the Colombian consulate. Pacific castaway Jose Salvador Alvarenga had to delay his trip home after his health deteriorated and he showed symptoms of severe dehydration. Alvarenga says he was adrift in the Pacific Ocean for more than a year after embarking on a fishing trip from Mexico. Dehydration can lead to kidney failure if the organs are overloaded with toxins. Bowel movements can be slowed if one is deprived of water for too long. A dehydrated person does not sweat fast enough to dissipate heat, which may lead to heat stroke when the body temperature rises and muscles contract involuntarily. Prolonged dehydration can also weaken cartilage which is 85% water. While many question the authenticity of Alvarenga's tale, authorities said information given by him was verifiable. Jose Salvador Alvarengo, a 37-year-old Mexican fisherman, had harvested shark and shrimp from the oceans for 15 years. In December 2012, Alvarengo and a teenage shipmate embarked on a day-long fishing trip. Shortly after leaving port, their vessel broke down and they soon lost sight of land. Alvarengo survived by catching fish, birds, and turtles with his bare hands. The teenager refused to eat the raw food and starved. Alvarengo drank his own urine to stay hydrated and even put his arm into the water as bait to catch small sharks. He was adrift in the Pacific Ocean for 13 months before the boat was washed ashore on the isolated island of Atoll. Wearing only ragged underpants, Alvarengo was rescued by two natives, ending his ordeal. The fishing boat, originally bound for El Salvador, drifted across 12,500 kilometers of ocean before finally making landfall at Ebon Atoll in the Marshall Islands. After a 22-hour boat ride, Alvarengo finally arrived at Mahuro, the capital of Marshall Islands. He is recovering in a local hospital. Something smells fishy. 
Last week, everyone collectively awed as two women and their dogs were rescued after being stranded at sea for months. But now eyebrows are being raised because details of the sailor's story just don't add up. A night after setting off from Hawaii on May 3rd, a ferocious storm supposedly broke apart the boat's mast and sail, even though no storm systems were spotted in the area that day or in the days after. At the end of the first month, another supposed storm killed their engine and left them drifting. They had six forms of communication devices, but all were dead. The pair apparently had an emergency position indicating radio beacon on board, which when activated tells the Coast Guard you need rescuing. And the device was working properly, but for some reason the woman didn't think the situation was distressing enough to warrant turning it on. For people who didn't need saving, they sure were diligent in sending up flares every time they passed a ship or island. It's both odd and a bit dumb that the two went on a long sea journey just after a week of knowing each other, and with one of them having no sailing experience whatsoever. Many netizens are now speculating these two might just be in it for publicity, maybe a book and movie deal? Then again, they might just be two inexperienced and overly ambitious sailors who made some very stupid decisions. In any case, the Coast Guard in Hawaii is looking into it, so we'll hopefully have the real story soon. Man fished out of the ocean after two days adrift. On November 6th, a man was found by the Colombian Navy floating adrift in the ocean. The 22-year-old man, identified as Solono Salazar, said that he and a friend had set out from Guapi to go fishing two days earlier. Their fishing boat capsized during an unexpected storm and Salazar was left clinging to a styrofoam cooler until he was found by the Navy. Unfortunately, his fishing companion is still missing.